Hi, it's Professor Schneiderman. I want to talk to you about the core concept of the narrative arc. The idea of the narrative arc is that it maps out a story. It's the very basic foundation of the smallest kind of story. And the idea is that if you use this structure, it will help you complete your story. If you have a character, but nothing happens to them, if you have an idea for an event, but you don't know how to get there, all of these things can be helped by using the narrative arc. So let's take the story of Cinderella. Cinderella lives with her stepmother and her stepsisters, and they are very mean to her. One day, the prince announces that he's going to have a ball because he wants to find a new wife. Cinderella would like to go to the ball, but she can't first. Her stepsister and her stepmother won't let her go. Then they give her a task and say if she does it, she can go. She completes the task. They still don't let her go. But then she has no way to get there and nothing to wear. So the fairy godmother shows up and says, here's a dress, here's some shoes, here's a coach, be home by midnight. So she goes to the ball. Um, the prince really likes her, but she has to leave by midnight, so she does. Then there's another ball. She has to leave by midnight. There's another ball. Um, and this time she loses her shoe. So now the prince is on the lookout for someone who fits this shoe. The sisters try it on, they pretend it fits, it doesn't. Then she tries on the shoe, bingo. The prince is going to marry Cinderella. The prince does marry Cinderella. Um, sometimes the stepsisters and the stepmother are punished and then they live happily ever after. So how does this fit the narrative arc? How can this help us think about the narrative arc? So first we have the equilibrium. We have a balance. We have something that's ongoing. Cinderella is treated badly by her stepmother and her stepsisters every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she's treated badly. It's an ongoing state of affairs. That's the equilibrium. Then there's a disruption. The disruption means the equilibrium can't continue. Now, the prince announcing a ball might seem kind of out of left field, but the bottom line is that that's the moment Cinderella says, oh, I'm not putting up with this anymore, <laughs> right? Like, I want something different. Uh, and that's what makes the equilibrium unsustainable. Then we have a lot of obstacles. Oh, so the disruption creates the rising question. So if the prince announces that he's going to have a ball to find a wife, the rising question is, will Cinderella be that wife? And then we have a lot of obstacles that get in the way, right? We have the stepsisters and the stepmother not letting her go. Um, we have her not having anything to wear or a way to get there. We have um, her having to be home by midnight. We have other people trying to put on the shoe, right? There's a lot of stuff that kind of prevents us from getting just directly from the disruption to the climax, right? If it were, um, Cinderella lives with her evil stepmother and her evil stepsisters, and that's the equilibrium. The disruption is the prince has a ball, they all go, and then she marries him. Like, that's boring, right? So we need some pushback um, as we're getting from the disruption to the climax. And remember, the disruption should create the rising question. So the climax is when we know the answer to the rising question, right? So if the disruption is the prince announcing the ball, and our rising question is, will Cinderella marry the prince when the shoe fits? Yes. The answer is yes. She will marry the prince. That is our climax. Um, and a lot of times in stories, we don't necessarily know what the rising question is as readers until we reach the climax. And then we're like, oh, okay, that's what the story was about. Um, falling action is what happens after the climax. And then an open ending does not have a new equilibrium but a closed ending does. And so happily ever after is a closed ending. Um, we know what happens, they live happily ever after. So the value of the narrative arc, the equilibrium, the disruption that makes the equilibrium unsustainable, the rising question that's created by the disruption, the pushback, the obstacles that keep us from getting straight from the disruption to the climax, the climax, the falling action, and the new equilibrium, are ways for us to think about structuring the story. If we only have an equilibrium, if we just have Cinderella <sighs> suffering every day, it's not really a story, right? We need that equilibrium in order to get to the pursuit of the prince 
and the, pr the prince's pursuit of Cinderella, right? Um, so wherever you are in your story, if you only have a main character and that main character has an equilibrium, what would disrupt it? Um, the disruption should come out of the person's life. And remember, the disruption or the inciting incident has to make the equilibrium unsustainable. There's a reason that things can't continue as they are. And that disruption is going to create the rising question that's going to lead us to the climax. And then once we have the climax, we're usually finished. Now, an important thing to remember is that the narrative arc is the order of events in the order in which they happen to the characters. We often tell the story in a different order. If we're thinking about Titanic, right, where we have um, Rose is going to marry someone that she doesn't really like, but she meets this guy, Jack. Will she be with Jack? No, because he dies. And then she decides to be alone and we find out that she lived a life without um, either Jack or the guy she was going to marry. Um, but that's not how we tell the story, right? The story starts um, way over here and then comes back and then comes back. Um, but if we want to map out the narrative arc for Rose and Titanic, it's the order of events in which they happen to Rose, not the order in which we as viewers are told the events that's happening. If you think about... Um, Murray's Paradise, which we read, it starts with the disruption. And that's a very common technique. Disruptions are intriguing. A lot of times we start with, with disruptions because they're exciting. And then we find out about the equilibrium and then we move forward to the climax. Usually the climax is at the end because it's exciting. If we know the climax, um, there's no suspense. Um, even though a lot of times if the climax is early, then we kind of want to know how we got there and that's what's exciting, but usually the climax will be at the end. So wherever you are in your story, um, if you have one piece, but not the others, or if you have two pieces, but not all of the pieces, the story may feel stagnant, the story may feel incomplete, the story may feel kind of stuck. And so mapping out the narrative arc will give you a way forward because you can see what piece you're missing and then you can make it up. I hope this helped. And if you have more questions about the narrative arc, um, come see me also.